Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the JF-17 and we're looking at the targeting pod, the WMD-7. This pod is contemporary and similar to the Lightning II pod that we get with modern aircraft in DCS. In this video today, we're going to keep it really simple. We're just going to look at the functions of the pod, but we're not going to be employing weapons. The reason for that is we keep getting complaints that we're including too much in a video and they're getting too long, so we're just going to look at the pod's functions. First of all, we can arm up a pod on Parlance 4 two or six we're going to put one in the center and just for the fun of it we're going to have some gb6s although we won't actually be firing them today next we'll insert our data cartridge and do the dtc air sms entry and then take to the air so let's look at the controls that we're going to be using today and there's quite a few of them to go to air to ground mode to use the pod there to lock a target to create a speed there to unlock there to slew the T-Pod or the TDC in the hard, we're going to have TDC up, down, left, right. To zoom the T-Pod in or out, we're going to have FOV increase, FOV decrease. To manually designate the laser and fire the laser, laser on off. To change soy to the right MFD, we'll have S1 right. To change soy to the HUD, we'll have S1 back, S2 back, and S2 forward will change for narrow and wide field of view. We've got S2 left is going to change between CCD and or TV and IR. S2 right is going to change between white hot and black hot if using the IR sub mode. There are a few more as well, but I think that's enough for today. First, air to ground mode. Next, check where our master arm is on and it is remember our laser won't fire if the master arm is not on next on this screen here main menu pod wmd7 off it's now aligning and it will take a few seconds to align we are ready to use the pod now the first thing is we want to cage this pod here it's currently facing backwards and looking into our own aeroplane you can see it's been masked there so what we want to do is cage it to the ball site which is always about there on an aircraft so we're going to press cage there and it's now as you can see facing forwards we know because this is where the t-pod c is that circle and that dot there so let's go through the symbology and the main functions this is just telling us the pod we've got equipped this is whether we want TV mode or whether we want IR. We'll stick for TV today because the visibility is good. SP are the two master modes. Do we want it? SP, snowplow, which is our, if you like, our basic default mode. Or we can slave it to a SP, a sensor point of interest. And we'll have a look at that in a bit. Next is whether we want wide or narrow field of view. So this is currently wide, as you can see quite clearly. And that is narrow and you can see it's zoomed in you can just see the mountains there we have the ability to search for a third party laser from another aircraft or a jtac and we can do it by searching like that we'll have an example of that in a different video next if we want to set the code of the laser search and the targeting designator laser we can set it here and we're just going to put it to one uh, six eight eight as our standard you can see our code is down there 1688 or a laser spot search and our laser designator this is how we control our laser designator so the laser designator is what we use if we're going to drop our own laser guided bomb or laser guided rocket if it's on auto then the laser will fire automatically when we release the weapon and if we go to manual then we can designate on and off manually you can see it's flashing at the moment which it is actually designating a laser at the moment we'll look into that further in a bit next we can refocus force a refocus just in case we've lost focus that's our laser code as we saw this is just telling us that master arm is on this is our contrast and we can change it with him up and him down to your specifications that looks pretty good there this is our gain whether we want up or down and this will work with tv and ir mode next are our slew points that green guy there and that green guy there are our slew points so that means it is slewed neutrally in terms of vertical and neutrally in terms of horizontal and it can slew to the limit the bump stops if the edge if you like at which point it can slew no further if you're tracking a target and it goes out of slew limit it will just give up the track it can no longer track this is our targeting cross that just shows what the t-bods actually aiming at this is northing and easting of what the t-pod cross is actually aiming at and this is the range once we lock we're currently unlocked 
So in SP snowplow mode, we're going to move this around and try and find some targets. So first we have to make this screen here, soy center of interest. We'll do that with S1 right. And you can see we get that little guy there. This is now our center of interest. We can now use our TDC cursor keys to move around. Now I know there's some bad guys around here somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to narrow field of view. I could do these with the HOTAS commands. I just prefer to click on them at the moment. And you can see we've got some bad guys over there. We can now use our zoom in. We We can use our refocus if we need to, but it should do it automatically. So if our teapot's just pointing in a piece of terrain here and we press the target lock button, we've created a lock there. Um, we've actually created a SPI on that area there. You can see that it's updated the northern easting. That is that point there. Also, the range from us to that point, the slant range is 8.4 nautical miles. Also, we have a situational awareness queue that guy there that's telling us that if we are here facing that way our teapot is facing front ways and down a bit if it was completely front ways it would be up there if it was looking directly down it would be there if it was looking right and very laterally it would be over there so it's telling us where the teapot's pointing in relation to where we're flying this tells us the type of track that we've entered we've entered an area track this will allow us to deploy a weapon on a piece of land basically and if we look at the HUD we can see our teapot symbol is here and we've also got a SPI symbol which is a diamond to show that we've created a SPI on that target there and that means with a SPI, a sensor point of interest, that is what we need to go and drop a bomb or fire a missile or, or, or whatever. That's created if you like a target point. Next I decided that's not good enough so I want to get that Jeep there so I'm going to move over there. I'm going to press target lock again. I uh, missed him, let's try again. Got him. This time because it's an actual discernible vehicle it's turned it to point track which means it's now instead of just locking a piece of land it's now locking an actual contrastable seeable vehicle and if that vehicle moves while in point track it will continue locking him again we're going to have created a speed so we can go and drop a laser guided bomb fire a rocket whatever we want to do it doesn't have to be a laser guided thing basically any weapon we can go and now employ on that speed just for fun i'm going to fire a laser designator at him so i'm currently in auto i'm going to go to manual so we're now lasing and someone could go and drop a bomb on 1688 laser. I can turn it off with the laser override command as we saw earlier. I can turn it back on. Interestingly, just note that if you're an auto, you can also, also manually override that by pressing the laser designator. And we can turn it off again like that. So remember, when it's flashing, you are laser designated on that code there. That's all I want to show with Snowplow. Now we're going to have a look at slave mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to just remove that track by doing unlock and we're now going to recage the system pressing up there so it's now slave back to the bore site of the vehicle so what we're going to do is this time use slave mode so we're now going to make our hud soy with s1 down the hud is now soy as you can see i'm now going to use my tdc to find something on the hud i like the look of that big building there a nice big chunky building let me try and get that right there i'm now going to press lock and you can see because we're in slave mode our teapot has slaved to this point now so we can slave it to whatever the SPI is and the SPI doesn't have to be a designation from the HUD it could be from let's say a waypoint the various ways of slaving this to our current SPI now here's something else important I want to show I want to show how we can create a mark point through this so mark points uh, a very useful thing we can do so i'm going to go back to snowplow here let's make this screen soy i'm just going to choose a random point how about in the middle of that runway there if that's a runway i think it is so i want to create a mark point there for later use what i'm going to do is i'm going to target lock we've now created our speed as you can see now i'm going to go to mark i'm going to toggle overfly to designate we're going, to, we're going to overwrite data point 41. We're going to press mark again. We've now written this information here into mark point 41. We can prove that with DST if we really want. Uh, step down here. You can see we've now got mark point 41 that we've got there. And now what we can do is undesignate everything. So let's just get rid of everything now. Just recage everything back to standard. I'm going to put that as slave here, so we've got nothing on that runway anymore. I can now reslave this teapot back to that previously marked data point 41. If I went back to our main menu here, 
and I went to here, if I went, to, uh, I want uh, data entry 41, enter, and you can see it slave back to that data point, and I could slave it to any point, a mark, uh, mark point, a waypoint, a uh, target point, whatever. I hope that was useful, see you later.